Hello everyone, today we're going to be covering stimulus controller values. These are a nice way to pass data from your uh, backend controller to your stimulus controller. Uh, they also allow you to have some level of reactivity when something in your application changes. You can have that on change fire uh, without needing to define a lot of the logic. Uh, so to do this, we're going to start by creating a new Rails project. We'll say Rails new video. We'll CD into that video and then run a code dot to open up ES code. Uh, in terms of the values themselves and how to use them, we're going to create a quick little scaffold, create a stimulus controller. Uh, pretty contrived example. Basically, we're going to have a bunch of posts. Uh, and if they are meant to be visible, we will then show them. If they're not visible, we will hide them in JavaScript. Now I can already hear the snarky comments. Uh, so to deal with those, uh, we're going to address them as fast as possible. Uh, we're going to do a Rails G scaffold and we're going to create a post, a title, a body of type text and a visible of type Boolean. After we do that, we can come into our app, our controllers and our post controller. In the event that you don't want to toggle this visibility on the front end, just do a quick little check if visible is true. Uh, and that's going to give you the same uh, effect as what we're doing here. So if, if you're already writing that comment, like why would you toggle visibility on the front end? You wouldn't, it's just something that I'm doing here to, uh, <laughs> to demonstrate. Uh, but okay, we have that. Let's come into our DB and our seeds real quick uh, because we want to generate some seed data. The seed data is just going to be some faker data. So we'll do a, a bundle add faker. We can then do our seeds real quick which is going to look like this. Uh, so we're going to do a 10 dot times do with a post dot create, create it with a title, a body, and we set the visible to be random between true and false. Go ahead and save that. Let's go ahead and let's do a rails db colon migrate db colon seed. And that will migrate and seed our database real quick. Let's do a rails g stimulus or a visibility controller. And then we can do a rails s. So the visibility controller is where we're going to do our logic for hiding the stuff. And in our config and our routes.rb over here, config routes.rb, we can set the root to be the post controller index action. Go ahead and close all of that. Now that we have that, let's come into our app, our views, our posts, and our post index page. In our post index page, we want to create a div. It's going to wrap around everything here. We'll just go ahead and move this down. Inside of this div itself, we're going to say this needs to have a controller, which is going to be the visibility controller that, that we just created. We can then do a data visibility value, uh, which is, uh, this is going to be how we declare our values. So it's data dash name of the controller, which we have defined right here, dash name of the uh, the field that we're trying to, to say is a value. So in this case, it's going to be the visible value, dash value, because we have to repeat ourselves 30 times. Uh, and then we just put in here whatever we want. In this case, we're saying post.visible is what we're putting in here. Now, of course, there is a cleaner way to do this. You could do a content tag, a div, and then you could have your data uh, and then inside of this data, you could do your data dash controller, or I guess just your controller, which is visibility. And then you would have your uh, visibility underscore visible uh, underscore value equal to uh, post dot visible or whatever. Uh, this works too. Just make sure that your uh, kebab case becomes your snake case here uh, because reasons. Uh, and aside from that, this would also work. But in this case, we're just using this regular old div. And the final thing I'm doing here, this is not good practice, but we want to be able to edit this in a minute here. So I'm going to give this a arbitrary ID, which is going to be post underscore and then the ID underscore container so that I can access this element specifically. So we'll do all that. That gives us our div. Uh, we can then come into our app JavaScript uh, controllers and our visibility controller. In our visibility controller, we need to have our value defined. So we'll come up here, we'll say this has a static values, uh, and then this values will just be a visible, which is going to be of type Boolean. Now you're probably asking, what else can we use for our types here? Uh, and there's a couple, a couple that you can use. Uh, so instead of just a Boolean, you could have a, uh, I don't know, like a list, which is an array. You could have a uh, age, which is a number. 
you could have a car, which is a object, or you could have a name, which is a string, right? So those are uh, your types. I think there's one, two, three, four, five types. Uh, but the one we're using here is just that visible. If you need to give it a default value for any reason, you would not have this uh, Boolean here. You would have a type of Boolean and then a default of whatever you need. In this case, my default would just be false, uh, but you could of course change this to whatever you need. So that's how you can set that up. Uh, but in this case, we're just gonna be using visible is uh, Boolean. So that's all we're doing. Next, what we can do is we can come into our connect and in our connect, we can just fire a uh, this dot update visibility method, which is gonna be down here. Update visibility is going to be if uh, this dot visible value. So similar to how we use our data, uh, we can just say this dot visible value or sorry, our targets. Uh, this allows us to use the value keyword instead of the target keyword. Uh, and then we can say this dot element dot style dot display equals block in here. And then for the else, we can just set the display to be none. Now this is neat uh, because it allows us to come into our application here. And actually I'm going to comment out this uh, connected method and I'm going to just refresh real quick so that we can hopefully see some of these are false and some of these are true. Uh, so we expect there to be uh, not as many uh, after we enable this. So we'll go ahead, we'll save this. We'll check our little scroll bar here on the side because uh, this is missing one set of braces. So we'll come over here again and we'll refresh. And hopefully this time when I refresh, we'll see the list get shorter and it's only true values that are appearing here. Okay, so that's uh, how we can use the values here. Now, the reason why these are nice is because we can also declare a method in here that is visible value changed. Again, it's going to correlate to whatever our uh, field is called. In this case, it's visible. And then if this is changed, we can just have some additional logic fire. Uh, so in this case, we could say uh, this dot update visibility. We can then come over here and we can uh, remember that we named the elements wrapping each of these posts, right? So the post here that has our uh, post one container, we can grab and we can come in here. We can say let post equal document dot get element by ID post one container. If we now check our post, oops, uh, we can check our post. We can see that's getting this element right here. And now we can say post uh, dot data set dot visibility visible value right here. Visibility visible value is equal to false. And you can see that just disappeared. So the reason why this works is because this on change is called uh, after we do that, which calls this update visible value again. Now, let's say for some reason you need access to the previous or the current values when this gets called, we can say current value and previous value in here. And now you can do something like a uh, console log. So we'll say console.log, uh, my previous value was, uh, plus previous value, something like that. Uh, and then we can say my current value is this. So now let's come in here and refresh one last time. Like control shift I, uh, there we go. Uh, you'll see these things do fire initially. That's something to be aware of uh, because it does change initially. But what we're gonna do now is we're going to say uh, post is equal to this post one container. And then we'll grab the data set and set it equal to false. And we can see the previous value was true. The current value is now false. Uh, which is why it returns false right there. So that is another thing to be aware of is that you can do that uh, to sort of see what your changes were and what, you, uh, what you're changing to, depending on what you need it for. Uh, that's always something that can come up. Uh, and the final thing is uh, the guide that I have here, the Stimulus uh, Hotwire Dev has a naming convention, which tells you in your HTML to use kebab case, which is where you have the hyphens, which makes sense. Cause if we look in our HTML already, our data dash controller, data dash visibility, these are all in kebab case. And then for the stimulus uh, JS, uh, it always encourages you to use camel case, which is what our method names are. So there's really nothing shocking there. Uh, the only thing that can be a bit jarring is your uh, your hyphens convert to underscores and your underscores convert to hyphens depending on what you use. Like with our content tag, you probably saw that the uh, underscores become hyphens. Uh, so that's a little weird, 
that it kind of goes against its own conventions. But I'll have a link to this entire reference in the video description if this is something you're interested in. Uh, it can be a little bit weird to read the first couple times, but hopefully this video helps you uh, read it a bit better and get used to it. Uh, but yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully this was informative and helpful, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.